Hello and welcome to another episode of Temporary Australians. I'm Jonesy. And I'm Hurston. And this is Mike. This is what we've got coming up on the show today. Paul Fennick from Houses on SBS talks motorcycles and chicks. We ask a few experts about Casey Stoner's racing future. We look into a bit of Melbourne's motorcycle history. We find out if bikes bring relationships together. Dennis Paulin tells us about the overseas export of the Ulysses Club. Ezio from Victory Sydney maps out his favourite rides. Jonesy reveals his love for old-time sports suits. And Angry Anderson gives us the lowdown on Rose Tattoo, Fat Pizza and his new gig on Houzo's. Now, look, I don't know if you've seen, like, we've got that new show, How's Those, yes. Um, is there anyone who's, like, watched this show? How do you know if your girlfriend's a Howzo? Her six-month-old and her have the same amount of teeth. That's true. Anyone from Mount Druitt, they can relate to that fully. Very easy. You're from Mount Druitt. From the Druitt, you made it out alive. And you're wearing a vest. How do you know if you're a Howzo? You mow the lawn and you find free tyrannas from, like, ten years ago. What sort of impact has Paulie had, do you think, on uh, your sales? Oh, Paulie's fantastic. He's a real card. He, um, his latest TV show, Houses on SBS, um, they, they're riding our bikes in the TV show. Um, so they have, uh, they have a, a motorcycle club in the show called Hunters MC. Angry Anderson's the president of the Hunters, and they're riding our motorcycles. The kids love it. Oh, I think it's a fantastic deal at the moment. Like, you know, just buy one bike, get a free chick. That's mad. I mean, you know, you don't see that at the Harley Davidson shop. You know, <laughs> just guys with beards. <laughs> That's certainly true. Uh, now, do you ride one of these? Yes, actually, I've got one of these ones. I've got the Bobber and I've got the the Spider, and um, they're both they're, you know, they're good. I like them. I mean, they're you know they're like I'm, I'm a tight ass, so you know I go for price. So when I look at the like the bigger bikes price tags, I go, man, I can't afford that. I work for SPS, not Channel Nine. So these are a good cheap option for a tight ass like me. The Maltese we're tight. We don't like to spend, so but we like the things to look cool. So. What a mad compromise. So if someone's looking for someone to run over, are you riding around the city or are you out in the country? A bit of both, a bit of both. So I'm an equal target on, on any level. <laughs> Going up the coast on one of these bikes, I know they're essentially a learner bike, um, but do you find that they handle the, um, the roads and back roads as well? Yeah, well, the, the Spider, I can't say I've taken the Bobber for like any big runs just yet, but the, the uh, Spider I did take all the way from Sydney to, uh, what's the, Maitland Jail? And return and by the beaches and that last summer and I had a mad trip, no dramas and smooth and had a chick on the back and no problem. So they let you out of the jail quickly, I gather. Well, no, it's actually closed now, but so I just I was just visiting old memories and uh, they were great yeah. memories, but it doesn't matter. Let's not talk about that. Well, speaking of memories, what's happening with Fat Pizza? Well, Fat Pizza at the moment we don't know, but at the moment obviously the big show is Houses. Everyone's like the shirt in case you don't know the show Houses. Um, it's going off and we're probably going to make a movie of that next year. And there might be some fat pizza stuff in the Houses. In fact, it could be Houses fat pizza movie, so it could be hectic. Well, I'm sure a lot of people will be very glad to hear that news. It's kind of part of the Australian uh, folklore now, isn't it? Pizza, how long did it run for? Uh, pizza ran for like nearly 10 years, you know, like I think we did something like uh, about 80 episodes, which has probably got to be a record for Australian comedy. So, um, you know, and, like, all the Stooges are still there. I mean, it's, it's Houses now, but Habib's still there, Rocky's there, I'm there. It's just, you know... It's pizza by another name, just with less money and thongs. Look, can you get a close-up of the thongs? See, one is Rip Curl and one is just generic brand. As you can see, it's, you know, the economy is tight all over. It's not just tight in Europe, bro, it's tight in jeans in Sunnyvale. Any sport in Australia, when there's uh, an Aussie doing well, whether it's the, uh, the tennis, the ashes, or you know, Formula One and motorcycling in particular, there's the Casey Stoner effect, like there was the Mick Doohan effect and the Wayne Gardner effect. And so he brings lots of people through the gates and lots and lots of people are wearing Casey Stoner number 27 merchandise. So it's, uh, you know, you only look at the campgrounds and the number of Casey Stoner flags and it should be Stoner Town, I think. Quite easily, he's quite unbelievable. I think the kid's got an enormous amount of talent. Um, and we've seen that, you know, clearly from his two world titles, 2007, 2011 and all his victories. I think if he wants to go on for another four or five or six years, he could possibly break records if that's what he wants to do. I don't think he does. I think Casey just wants to race and win races, um, which then bring him championships. But, um, 
you know, I, I believe in all forms of motorsport, there's a lot of good guys and a lot of talented guys, but there's very few exceptional guys, and he's one of them. Uh, Valentino's one, Lorenzo's one, but um, you don't come across him very often, but he's very good. The interesting thing is when you start adding up the numbers between Rossi and Stoner, and I know that's a big course, Rossi's obviously got nine titles, Stoner um, possibly two today, I won't put the market on him, but um, in the last six years Rossi's record is actually better than, sorry, Stoner's record is better than Rossi's, which is a really interesting point. Um, so yeah, he's definitely one of the, a great rider, but until he's got five titles under his belt, then, you know, what Mott McEwen did was pretty special as well, so yeah. Well, he is, Stoner is 26 today, I believe, That's so right. uh, how long do you think he's got at the sport at this um, elite level? Oh, mate, I think, I mean, as you see, he doesn't, he doesn't rub it on the ground very much. Um, when he does, they're slow and controlled. He's, he's an awesome talent. I love watching him ride. He buries that front end in, in like nobody else. And, but the important thing about his riding style is it's not loose. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, bury it too hard in the ground and, and hurt himself a lot. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's finding it easier to ride um, the Honda than any other bike in his career. And who knows, I think it's, it's there for him as long as he wants it and as long as he's got the drive, which is what he's said before too. You know, people can look at Casey Stoner and say, he's a motorcyclist, he's doing really well, he's representing Australia in a way that no one else is in this particular field. And I say good on him. We're very, very fortunate, and I'm very, very fortunate to be here today to see what's going to go on in the final race. Well, my last question has to do with uh, 2012, with the yep. change from 800cc limit to 1,000. Do you think that's going to affect the style of racing? I'm sure like any of the changes they have, um, there needs to be a, a, an adaptation of their riding style. It handles differently either into the corners and out of the corners. It's probably going to produce about 0.3 to 0.5 of a second improvement in lap times. But the interesting thing is that top speed, which around this circuit, um, Casey's been getting to about 325 down the main straight, but we've had um, South Westleys that's been closing the speed up a little bit. But he's got up to um, 330 normally, He'll be nudging 350 on the, on that bike next year, but he's saying uh, um, it's great. He adapts to a new bike uh, really well. We saw it. He won on Ducati, first year in Ducati. He's likely to win the world championship on a Honda in his first season. Not many, if any, riders ever do that. So he's a world-class rider, and I think he'll adapt to it better than probably anyone else. standing in famous Elizabeth Street in Melbourne, the motorcycle precinct that's been famous in this town since 1903. Elizabeth Street is the spiritual home of motorcycling, arguably I think for all of Australia, so you know the first motorcycle shop that ever opened in Australia was in this street in 1903 by the Millage family uh, and they were involved in the motorcycle industry right up until the late 80s, so a lot of history in Elizabeth Street particularly with that family. Um, yeah, it is the place to be. If you're going to be in the motorcycle strip, this is where to be. Elizabeth Street, Melbourne is pretty well unique. I mean, it's certainly extraordinary. Elizabeth Street itself used, was the uh, transport axle or hub of uh, uh, Melbourne. There's uh, not many places in the world that have a motorcycle precinct in the central business district. And the whole street used to be full of tiny little businesses. Now, of course, we've got the, the bigger, uh, slicker operations, but there's still a few little ones there, and there's, there's backups like engineering workshops and that up the laneways off Elizabeth Street, so it's really quite a uh, precinct. In, in Elizabeth Street, you've got some of the major players. I already mentioned uh, Ducati and Victory, mm. but Peter Stevens, it's um, very prominent um, in Elizabeth Street with a whole range of, um, of motorcycle makes. Well. Peter Stevens, um, I, I don't even know how many brands they've got now, but that would have to be the biggest, I'm guessing, but it would have to be the biggest motorbike uh, retailer in Australia, I would think. Well, the Peter Stevens name is, when we started, we didn't think the Italian name would go down too well. This is the late 60s, early 70s, and the surname Kyoto, we just didn't think it was a correct name for a motorcycle industry. Uh, motorcyclists are quite conservative and an Italian name like that probably, well it's difficult to spell and say. So. Um, and it was at the era of Kevin Dennis uh, car dealership and we thought we needed a nice simple name and uh, an advertising agency came up with, well use Peter and Steve, the two brothers. 
on the back of this t-shirt is uh, 100 years of motorcycling. In 2003 we celebrated, we had a big uh, bike show and the veteran and vintage guys, the classic club and the vintage club, they got a motorcycle from each year, 1903 onwards, a restored Serious. bike, and yeah. they put them all up the footpath, right up out the front of Mary Chiodo from Peter Stevens yeah. organised it, and this fantastic display of bikes right up to the latest model, 2003 model, in a line. So you can walk down the line and go all the way back to, the, to a 1903 motorcycle. We were very nervous about moving off Elizabeth Street, particularly the strong history that uh, Elizabeth Street has. And uh, to our surprise, uh, all the changes which have happened with traffic, etc., uh, has allowed this street to create its own culture. People can come here and park out the front and hang out and not be uh, in the marauds that are just normal city traffic. So it's been actually a positive move for motorcyclists. Are you yeah. still getting people go to the old store and oh, yeah. go, where are you? Where oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't break 30 years of history and pattern uh, that quickly, but uh, they're coming in and seeking it out, so that's been good. Yep. My partner in England always wanted a Harley, and um, he had a huge passion for it, and I got that passion from him. Um, he died very suddenly and never had his Harley, so when I moved back to Australia and met my partner now, I bought myself one for my 50th birthday. Do, do you actually think being able to go on rides together is a good thing in relationships? Yes, definitely. It, it's, um, it's what sort of got us together and um, it's, it's a common interest but we also can do our own thing. So he can go off with the boys and I can go off with the girls but then you have something to come back to and talk about. Um, he's busy at work today and I have a day off so it's nice to, to be able to annoying with it tonight um, but it is uh, you know you do things as a couple together it, it, it is brings you together you know Kiwi's wife's always on the back she doesn't ride and she wouldn't be anywhere else but sitting on the back of that bike and that's that's nice we do encourage um, you know fam families so if, if there's a ride, overnight a ride to anywhere you know we do encourage you know the family to come along as well so if the, you know the, the wife comes in the car with the kids or just the wife you know doesn't like the back of the bike but still wants to get away we encourage that and you know we, we do have different you know few cars on you know most of our overnight rides you know so to encourage that you know, that family orientated, you know, this is what the, the husband does, but yeah, the wife's more than happy to come along as well. Oh, the husband's in the car and the wife is on well, the car. Well, that's possible too. Right? <laughs> I don't know that I'm in charge. <laughs> and I get into a lot of trouble if, if, a, if I go too fast and her head starts buffeting with the wind. My head, my head ended up buffeting because she's bashing me. <laughs> but apart from that, she's fine. She's actually really good on the back of the bike and she's, um, yeah, just... Yeah, good pillion. Because we, we do a lot of things together, there's a lot of activities that we do together, and uh, I think it's just a, it's an, uh, um, an add-on to our, our relationship. I've been on bikes all my life, my dad had one, so he used to take me to my piano lesson on the back of my bike when I was about five. So I've, I've spent a lot of time on the back of one, but um, we've yeah. been out through central Queensland on the bike. With, um, you know, and and it's, it's a great thing to do, it's fun. It does require trust. It does require trust, <laughs> and he does go too fast, and my head does buff it. <laughs> we are a social club for uh, motorcyclists over 40 years of age, and uh, our motto is grow old disgracefully, but it's tongue in cheek. Some people take it a bit too literally, <laughs> and uh, that's okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's the thing about bikers, isn't it? We do have that sort of sense of humour, that quirky look at the world. And uh, well, Australians <laughs> generally have got a very good sense of humour, haven't they? Not as good as the English, but uh, it, it nevertheless is a is a good sense of humour. And um, we like taking, uh, can I say, piss? We like taking the piss out of people. And uh, sometimes when you're overseas, like in America, they don't get it. Ulysses Club is one of those successful exports from Australia, isn't it? True. It, it formed in Sydney in 1983, and uh, we now have overseas branches. New Zealand was probably the first to kick off, but uh, New Zealand is quite big. They've got a lot of members. We've got uh, branches in South Africa, Canada. We don't have one in the United States yet, although we've got about a dozen members in the United States that uh, communicate with it. Uh, we just have the latest is uh, Netherlands in Holland, just uh, only about a month ago. 
kicked that one off with uh, Germany, UK, Zimbabwe, uh, Botswana is on the go at the moment, uh, Vietnam. Um, Quite a list. I think that's about it, yeah. How do you manage all of that, or are they all independent? Well, they're all independent and they, they take their lead from us in the use of the name and the, uh, <laughs> the ethics and the motto and that sort of thing, you know, and uh, so far we haven't had any, any trouble, but I guess somewhere down the road there, there might be somebody who gets uh, bigger than Ben-Hur and wants to take over, but so far it works very well. Yeah, we've got uh, 27,000 members and uh, only in the last 12 months have I noticed that people know a lot more about the Ulysses Club than they have done in the past. So. I can't, I can't really answer why that would be, but uh, probably because we are getting bigger and um, a lot more publicity and so forth. Our road safety people do an enormous amount of work with um, uh, state governments and federal government and so forth, you know, on things that affect motorcyclists and road users and that, because we, we are a downtrodden lot, there's no question. I mean, mo uh, cyclists get a better deal than we do, and uh, we, we have to pay the same tolls as motor cars and uh, you say, why do trucks pay more because they damage the road? Well, why do we pay the same as cars when a motorcycle obviously doesn't damage the road? So there's all those sorts of things where we're, we're oppressed, if you like, and uh, we're trying to balance the, uh, uh, right the balance. I, I guess five years ago, we used to be thought of as a, um, the one percentage, you know, the, uh, the outlaw motorcycle club and so, but nobody these days really uh, mixes us up with them. They know that we're a different group and that the police understand that, uh, that we're a, a social club for motorcyclists and yeah, you've got your own identity. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think that's very uh, true. Very true today. Yeah. I'm a late bloomer. I didn't start riding bikes until very late. I started in the auto industry you know, some 20 plus years ago and I didn't start riding motorcycles until late in life and as soon as I discovered two wheels I said I've got to get a bit more of this. What would be the best motorcycle rides around this town you reckon? My, my favourite track is the Putty Road. I think it just has everything to offer from Windsor through to, to uh, Wollumbi basically all the way up and back. Um, that's always a good ride. The National Park through Sutherland and down towards um, south coast is a good ride and there's also a couple of good rides down the other southwest area from Campbelltown through the back of Picton and over Razorback and around those areas. So there's, there's quite a lot and if you really wanted to you could go up the mountains over Bell's line of road. So you've got plenty of spectacular places you can go for a ride and enjoy Sydney and the countryside. What more could you want other than living in Sydney, eh? Uh, a little less traffic but otherwise, yeah, you're right, it's a great place to be. It's a great place to be. Well, have a look at this. What's your name, big fella? John. John? Yeah. What a great looking sporty. Thanks, mate. One of a kind. Uh, uh, well, it's an uh, iron head shovel. Yeah. So uh, it's good that you brought a ute along to drag the thing around. Don't be like that. That's a sports to joke. That's don't terrible. Don't be like that. The history of this bike, John, what's, um, what are we looking at? Uh, mate, it uh, started life as an 85 iron head, the crossover to the evolution. So it was the last of them. Uh, I decided I want to be a little bit different. So, I mean, when I bought it, it was already raked, um, had the Fat Bob tank, but I took it a bit further, extended it, put the skulls and... Uh, Did you know the skulls, someone so, said once that if you're into skulls, it's a fear of death. I well, mean, if you ride a motorcycle, you I have a healthy fear. Uh, no, I don't think it's a fear of death. I think it's uh, embracing it mm. myself. I mean, it's, some, it's part of us. We're all going to end up that way one day. <laughs> yeah. Um, some earlier than others, exactly. I mean, especially if you're anorexic, but... Yeah. Um, or you ride a Hayabusa. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. With Houses, do you think that um, the popularity of that show has had an impact on Rose Tattoo? Because I understand that's, the band is going quite well at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yes, I wouldn't discount that at all. It's a very interesting question. I kind of, make, maybe with the other way around too. No, I'm kidding. The, um, <laughs> undoubtedly, no, undoubtedly. I don't know, I tell you what happens with, um, when I go out and speak to schools, you know, I, I do a lot of public speaking and, you know, a fair bit of it's at schools and stuff. And I, I know that they recognise me from Fat Pizza or Swift and Shift or now Houzos more so than Rose Tattoo because they're all teenagers there at school. So they know very little about Rose Tattoo. So what the teachers do is tell them, well, Google it. But the first recognition, the first level of recognition is how so. So yeah, it's, 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 it's kept 
you know, the character, if you like, or the face alive. And uh, that's the great thing about, um, about TV. That's why I know that we can do a lot of good out there on the road uh, for other bikers, for other blokes and, and women that ride motorcycles. Well, I think it also makes you relevant to young people and young motorcyclists being involved in a program like that because it really does attract a young audience. Yeah. And uh, so it can only be uh, expanding your field of influence. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I know that the, the, that's why I know the reach is going to be so important because it, um, you know, you've been off TV for a couple of years. I mean, you know, like in the 80s and the 90s, you know, and I was a household name because of television. Like, you know, and I mean, I mean, gratefully, I, can, I can't go anywhere in this country without being recognised, and that's a terrific thing. But um, I remember my mum said to me years and years and years ago when I first got on TV, and apart from the fact she thought, oh, thank Christ, she's got a decent, you know, proper job. But um, yeah. heard that one before. Yeah, indeed. And um, she's uh, she said to me, you know, um, I, I'm really, really glad you're doing something with your fame. You know, I mean, I've always taken notice of what my mum says. <laughs> Otherwise, she'd beat the <laughs> out of me. But um, and uh, she said to me not too long ago, I had a crack at her, and she went, she said, don't ever think, because she knows, you know, your mother can beat you around the head with a piece of wood. You're never going to lift your hand to her. But um, she said, don't you ever think you're going to get too old or too big for your boots where I can't give you a smack around the ears. I said, Mum, I, I remember the getting a smack around the ears, you know. Any acting tips for Jonesy now that you've worked with him on Houses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not one to be given acting tips, actually. Uh, the great thing about all the roles that I've ever played, you know, whether it was Iron Bar in Thunderdome or, you know, no matter what it is, particularly in Houses, you know, that's just me. I just, I'm just playing a larger, but the only thing my kids said, as, as this guy, this will tell you how kids, my kids just said to me the other day, they said, geez, dad, you have to swear so much. And I said, well, compared to the others, I'm pretty tame. Okay, well, that was a great show, Josie. Excellent show. Some of your best work, Greg. Thank you, Josie. I thought you were great too. I'm off to get a frappe. Take it easy, shiny side up. We'll see you next week. See ya.